Hello and welcome back to the Not The Old Firm YouTube channel. My name is Ben Banks. Back with another exclusive interview. Uh, well, a bit of a quiet week in terms of domestic firm, but we've still got plenty to reminisce on with our latest interviewee, Scott Brown. It's international break as you watch this, so if you haven't checked out our Scotland content that's been on our website and on our YouTube channel this week, ahead of the three World Cup qualifiers that Steve Clarkson will participate in, do check them out, all the links in the description. For this video, we speak to Scott Brown, a former goalkeeper at Aberdeen. He's played over 500 senior games now, currently with Port Vale in League Two down south, but he had a couple of years at Aberdeen in the middle of that. Been in the EFL for a lot of his career, but going to Pataudry really took him out of his comfort zone. Plenty of highs, plenty of lows. And he joins me to discuss it all and a bit about what he's doing now and the state of play in football just now as we come to the end of the season, both north and south of the border. So we hope you do enjoy. Do remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and until next time, be formal. Um, bye. As I was saying before we hit record, um, you've hit a, a milestone 500 games, if I'm right in saying you might be just over that now. Um, but does it feel like you've played 500 games? Um, no, it doesn't, to be honest. Like, um, like I say, I look back now and you, you look back to your debut and you just think, Wow, that was it feels like yesterday. Um, but I've been fortunate enough to play for some some really good clubs for some some really good teams and, and met some great people along the way. So um yeah, but as as always, get last night's out of the game out of the way and you always want to get on to the next one. And uh, I think I'm up to about five hundred and thirty odd now. So um so yeah, I just want to keep going and, and keep taking each game as it comes and, and get as many as I can before I'm before I'm too old. Yeah. It must um so when did you um, sort of start your professional career? It must have been about, I mean, goalkeepers perhaps can play a bit more um, games-wise, but um, 2006-2007 time, was it? Uh, yeah, I remember, um, I think it was at Cheltenham, I think I was on the bench for about 100-odd games before I made my debut because the, the goalie was, he was just so consistent and, and never seemed to get injured. But at the time, I think I was like 20, 21 and, I was just happy to stay in football and you just do whatever you can to stay in football. And every when my contract came up, it was like, yeah, I can't guarantee you any games or, or anything like that. But just to stay in football at, at that age was was all I ever wanted to do. And um, eventually my, my chance came along in the FA Cup third round against Chester. Um, we actually knew that we were going to play Newcastle the next round. So it was a massive game. And uh, like I say, just just feels like yesterday sort of thing. So, uh, but yeah, anyone, you just got to, Football's the best sport in the world, and to to be doing it every day, and that's all I ever wanted to do, and, and to stay in the game. That, that's what I had to do, and be patient and, and wait for my chance. Mm, 30, 35 now, is it? And still thirty five. Yeah, get getting on a bit now. So yeah, um, still playing every week, but so I mean, silver linings and all that. Yeah, touch was still still doing playing every week. So, uh, but yeah, still still in the gym before training and after trying to trying to keep myself going as, as long as. As long as possible, but like I said about Kevin Ellison, just he was he's 40, 40 whatever, and still running around like he's like he's twenty one, especially when he scores a goal. But um, no, it's it's you just want to keep going as as long as possible because everyone keeps saying that you're a long time retired, and um, I, I still get up in the morning, still want, want to go in and work hard and and get ready for the next game, and and that's all that's all I wanted to do all my career, and I'll continue to do it. I think Kevin's probably a, a different breed, to be fair. I don't know if there's going to be... <laughs> but the way things I've read and stuff this weekend, I don't know personally like you do, but like, it sounds as if he wants to keep playing into like his mid-40s. There's a guy in, um, I think it's Japan, I think he's in his, um, he's in his mid-50s playing in the Japanese top flight. I'm pretty sure we're going to see Kevin Ellison now, still, <laughs> still, still turning out 50 two down south now. I said That's to him last true. night, it, it's never seen you run so fast ever all through your career. But when you scored that goal on Saturday, you you broke some records then running up past Eric Adam. Oh, yeah. Well, that's football for you. But I it's um, been a strange season, obviously. Um, no fans and stuff for most teams. I know a couple of teams have had 300 fans and things like that. But um, even in your career, probably the strangest you've had so far. Yeah, it, it, to be honest, I think. It just doesn't. It still doesn't feel like a football game when you go to it. It still feels like you're warming up, and it feels like a, a I don't know. It's like a checker trade game. We call it down here. It's like, like basically like a reserve game. Um, the, you try your best to get do everything right, but it just doesn't feel like a proper game sort of thing. And, and when you win, you don't have that same buzz. 
Uh, and when you lose, you don't have that same disappointment, that anger that, that you do when there's fans fans there. Um, and like I say, it just doesn't feel like proper football. And, and I think it's, it's been easier for the for the younger players to, to adapt to it because they've been used to playing, say, 23s football or under 20s football up there where there's been no fans or anything like that. Whereas like senior lads who have played three, 400 games all their career, they've, they've had crowds there. And to all of a sudden go from from that to to not having anyone there, it's it's been really hard. And like I say, I think the younger lads have adapted better to it than than what the senior lads have. But um, it's, it's hard to judge younger players this year as well because there's been no fans there, so you don't know if they can cope with playing in front of a crowd. So it's almost like they've just had a seat, an extra season playing reserve team football with no pressure, no fans there, or anything like that. So. It, they almost need another season to, to prove that they can do it when the pressure's on at, at different sort of clubs. So, like I say, the, the sooner we can get them back, the better, and the better it'll be for everyone. Right. I, know, um, I know people spoke enough at the start of the season about you having to adjust to life without fans, but I think you're probably at a point now, even, I know, Boris and is, is out saying everybody we're going to have 80,000 for the Euros and things like that. And while I am slightly sceptical about that... Um, <laughs> I think they're going to have a period of like players, are, well, as you say, particularly younger players, are going to have to adjust to fans being back. Like you're going yeah. to nothing to, I don't know, what attendance is at Port Vale probably similar to sort of up here, three and four thousand at a game. Yeah, we're, we're one of the better ones. We get uh, we get like just over five so most weeks. Uh, we're one of the bigger clubs in the league. But uh, I had a phone call about a young goalie the other day who's been playing in League Two and just asked me how he's done. And I said he's done really, really well. But he almost needs another season in League Two to show that he can cope with the with the fans that when he makes a mistake, he can cope with the stick that he's going to get from the home fans or the away fans or whatever, because it has just been almost like a, a season for for every player playing reserve team football. It's just not not proper football. Yeah, okay. I'm um, looking back. Um, you've been in England most of your career, but there was a, a short. I mean couple of years, but for the amount of time you spent at clubs, yeah, I suppose you can count a couple of years as a short spell. But um, when you moved to Aberdeen, you were just off, off the back of sort of playing 200-odd games for, for Cheltenham. Just a, a good chance for you at that point in your career. Yeah, um, I knew that, that Aberdeen were, were interested for a while and, and I went and met Derek and, and Russ at Crew Hall, actually, who's not, not too far from me. Um, and I, I came away from the meeting and I just like everything they said, it was about the club, about the city. It just made me want to want to come up there and join and just experience experience something different because I didn't want to be known as Scott Brown, the the Cheltenham goalie who, who spent twenty years at. Cheltenham. I wanted to be to prove or or test myself at a, a different level at a different club and um, a different city really. And and I'm really glad I went. And um, I remember the, the day I signed Langers. People say bad things about Langers, and people said bad things about me about him before I signed and he texted me straight away on the first day just said look if there's anything anything that I can do to help just let me know because you don't know the area if you want me to show you around and and everything like that and, and like I say people say bad things about him but I've got nothing but good things to say about Langley he's absolutely absolutely brilliant with me and um, I spoke to I can't pronounce his name he's at Salford now Bicek Aklav Haladki yeah uh, and he, he was saying what a fantastic fantastic coach he was as well and what a great person he was and uh, he's been absolutely brilliant for Salford as well and um, he's, he's far too good to be playing in League 2 but oh, he, he's a fantastic uh, he's a fantastic goalie and he seems like a really good guy as well and like I said nothing but good things to say about Langers as well Yeah I spoke to him but Jamie Langfield maybe nearly made his St Mirren return I commend them doing St Mirren Hibs was it when they had all the goalkeeper crisis and he was, uh, he was named on the bench I thought it was a bit sick <laughs> I thought it was a bit sick again I thought he was going to come on um, I think um, don't know, but at the start of the season, St Mirren had um, a COVID wipeout of their goalkeeper department. Yeah, I think they were left with a goal without a goalie for twenty four hours prior to playing Hibs on the Saturday. And there was a scenario in talks, perhaps Jamie Langfield going back in goals and um, making a one game return. <laughs> but Vakla, like, um, spoke to him a few times. Obviously, watched him at St Mirren. Like, I was nothing nothing against Salford. They've done very well to get him. But how he isn't playing championship football, um, dare I say higher, is unbelievable because what a goalie. Yeah, he's he I think he's I think they're ninth in the league, Salford, and obviously they've got the financial backing to attract somebody 
somebody like him. But even so, I, I still thought that he'd, he'd go a lot higher. And uh, I think he's kept 15 or 16 clean sheets in a, in a team that are ninth and don't score a lot of goals. And he's been by far and away their, their best player this year. And uh, I'm sure if he doesn't, if they don't get promoted this year, then then he'll have a lot of interest in the summer because he's been absolutely fantastic. Yeah, very good. Um, but when you move to Aberdeen, um, there's, there's big clubs in the AFL and different places, but Aberdeen up in Scotland are a massive club, but perhaps more so when you're in the thick of it, a very demanding club, as I'm sure you, you got to know. Yeah, that to be honest, that's one of the things I, I really struggled with. Um, going from, like you say, playing at Cheltenham and in front of two and a half, three thousand, to then playing at Pataudry or walking down the street and, and people recognising you, people talking to you, and um, that expectation where if you draw a nil nil at half time, you, you're almost getting booed off some weeks because the, the expectations that high and um, playing in front of 15, 16,000 every week was, was something that I hadn't done before. And um, it's something that I, I really struggled with. It especially a goalkeeper it's a, it's a lonely place sort of thing and uh, even when you, you kick one out for a throw in the gaffer one is to, you to hit Andy in the left back position and, and you kick one out for a throw in and the, the crowd are on your back straight away but uh, that, but that's something that I, I like I say I really struggle with but as I've got older I've almost come in back from Aberdeen because it's a, there's not many clubs bigger in the country than Aberdeen you come back to, to League 2 or League 1 it's a lot easier to cope with because you've been at being at a club like Aberdeen and uh, like I say it was a, a fantastic experience for me playing there and working with Jim Layton and, and like I say Langers and then Gordon Marshall came in who, who was absolutely fantastic as well so um, it was a, a really great experience for me. Yeah, I know a lot of um, farmers like and stuff gets rolled out about Scottish football whether it's Rangers or St Mirren or whoever it may be but I don't think people realise when you go to clubs like Aberdeen, Hibs, even you know like some alone St Mirren the the demands are a lot, even though they might have similar attendances to clubs in the Championship or League One or things like that, the demands are just so much higher say, plodding along in 14th, 15th in League One. Yeah, definitely. Like I say, especially, I can only speak from being at Aberdeen, they expect you to, they're not happy with even finishing third, say, if they finish third this year, they should be doing better with the, the history they've got and everything. And, um, and like I say, they've got some fantastic players there and still, and the, even when we finished second, we weren't happy to finish second. We wanted to go and go and win the league, and um, especially the, the my uh, my first season when Ronnie Dyler was in charge, and uh, we, we felt we had a real opportunity to go and do that, and and again in the second season. But um, like I say, we the resources that they've got, we, they were never going to we were never going to be able to compete with compete with them financially. But on the field, we we certainly felt like we gave them a right good go. Yeah, I think. Um... Celtic um, have obviously went on and won well, nine in a row, they've not quite reached the ten but those couple of seasons where it was you guys who were pushing Celtic instead of Rangers that sort of felt before Rangers this season like perhaps the time where Celtic's dominance could have came to an end because they weren't, even though they've got much better resources they weren't as great on the field and you guys had a lot of great players and were really thriving under Ben McKinnis Yeah, def- I think we beat them 2-1 at home um just after the window closed in February and I think we, we went top and then we went to St Johnston won 4-3 um, and then we really felt that we could we could really go and do something but uh, unfortunately we just, we just fell away towards the end of the season but after, after winning winning that and then going top and after we beat St Johnston we, we really felt we could we could go and achieve something. Yeah, it was, um, obviously you'll have noticed Derek McInnes left um, last week as we, as we record this. Um, how do you you kept up with him just sort of how he's been doing because it's been eight years now. It's yeah, um, obviously I still follow the, the results and that. My, my wife, actually, she made a lot of good friends there that she still speaks to to every every week sort of thing around like, the area and their husbands are, are all season ticket holders so they've all been, been moaning away to, <laughs> to Kim and, and things like that. So, um, no, but I think uh, over the eight years as a manager, you always look at where the club was when they took over and where where it was that they finished, the, the, the club was when they left. And it's certainly in a lot, lot better place where it is now than, than when he first took over. And, and that's credit to him and, and the board that he had the backing that he did. And like I say, the training ground as well that he pushed and pushed for. And, and hopefully, I don't know if, how the new ground's looking, but hopefully that can, can be on the way as well because it's certainly something that a club like Aberdeen deserves and, and the fans and, and the city deserves a, a new stadium to, to push on from. Yeah, because I think... Um... 
said baffling there. I don't know why I sound like I thought him. Um, I was baffled to see him stay for for as long as he did. Um, but eight years in management in the modern game, even as a player, I know you've stayed um, at clubs for lengthy spells, but it's very rare you see that length alone. Yeah, yeah definitely. I think, um, like I say, eight years is an unbelievable achievement. And he's probably one of the longest in, in the UK. Uh, and obviously not just Scotland, all over the country. So it's just credit to, to the job that he did. But um, I think he, like, he's unfortunate only to have won the one trophy um, in, in the eight years because he got to a lot of cup finals and unfortunately always came up against a, a really good Celtic team and uh, who were just better than them on the day. But um, like I say, he's, he's certainly put Aberdeen back on the map and, and I'm sure he'll be back in football soon. For you personally, you were speaking about sort of the the pressures and things like that. Um, I think speaking to a couple of different people that have came from down south, she's, I'm not saying obviously you're battered by the media or things like that. When you're um, when you're in Cheltenham and things like that, you maybe get the Cheltenham Star or the Cheltenham Herald writing about you. Whereas if you slip up at Aberdeen or even move a foot wrong, it is on the national papers. You're hearing about it on social media. You're hearing it from all angles. How was that sort of a big change as well? I can imagine. Yeah, that was. I always say to to young players now, if they get the chance to go up to the, the SPL, just you've got to go because you look. It's as close as you're going to get to to playing in in the Prem for experience wise. Because you like you're on the back page of the paper, the national paper every day. It's not just the the local paper. It's it's national coverage, and um, I think you. I think the the coverage is there, and it the the expectation, like you say, is the pressure that they're getting put under is is what they they need to get used to and. Um, I'd recommend it to anyone. Um, I mean, like even like at the start, I think I uh, I remember we kept take clean sheets in a row at one point, and and I remembered like they were phoning up my old man, like the Scottish papers were phoning up my old managers asking for stories about me and and things like that, and what's he like, what's this, and and I was just like I remember speaking to to one of my old managers, and he was like, what's what's going on have you done something or, or something like that and I was like no that's just just what it's like up here they just they just want it it is like the, the national papers down here but they don't some people who have never been up there and experiences just just don't understand that what it's like up there and the, the pressure and the expectation and they just love football everyone just loves football up there and, and that's why it's such, such a good club yeah I asked that after literally speaking to Che Adams his former manager before you but <laughs> But besides the point, I mean, you've, you've summed that up well. <laughs> oh, like it is not saying it's obviously Premier League coverage. I would love to have the millions, hundreds of millions um, that the Premier League's got. Even the Championship, the Championship's ridiculous amounts of money now. Um, but it is, as you would have found out, it is full on football here. Like everybody, it's a rarity to speak to somebody and they don't have a team or they don't have some sort of affinity to a football club. Yeah. That's what I say to people. I say you'd be walking down the street, and it's not like, say, you're here in Wolverhampton where you've got Birmingham, Wolves, Villa, uh, West Brom, Walsall. You've got so many clubs in such a sport, short space of time. You're in Aberdeen. You're either an Aberdeen fan or you don't like football because there's just no clubs for for an hour, pretty much either side. So, like I say, you're either an Aberdeen fan or or you don't like football, and and that's that's something special. And it's a one club sitting, and that's why everyone gets so passionate about the, the team there. Mm. Um, was there any particular games and stuff that sort of stood out for you at Aberdeen that you've been able to take back down the road to me? Uh, I think, yeah, when we beat Celtic 2-1 um, at home to, to go top and that was a, that was a special one. Um, keeping eight clean sheets in a row is something that I've, I've never been, I think I've got to four or five in a row, but never to eight. And, and that was something that I'll always, always remember. That was, that was brilliant. Um, but no, just just the experience of, of being up there for for two well, for for a year, eighteen months with my wife and my little boy was brilliant. And then I had six months in a hotel, which wasn't great. But no, I, I really enjoyed it. And I'm yeah. glad that glad that I, I came up there. Yeah, if you came up um, this season, you'd have spent twelve months in a hotel. So just as well you went down there. You <laughs> At least I could go out when I was in the hotel on my own. Well, well that's it. Um, but. Oh, I, I won't try and um, drag you through it too much, but obviously you had lots of good memories and stuff, but there were also some not so good um, memories that were, that I'm sure you know better than me, disappointments and things like that. Gold perhaps could have done better with them. Um, see, when those sort of things happened as well, you're speaking about the expectation and things like that. Um, they're not quickly forgotten, but they perhaps don't stay away as long. If, um, 
at clubs like sort of middle league one and stuff perhaps not yeah. games of importance but in games of importance um, I can imagine probably hurt a wee bit yeah definitely I felt I felt I did okay for the majority of the time I was up there but I felt I let people down in, in the big games when like the the semi-final um, against Dundee I felt I let people down in that game with one nil up and uh, came for the cross and didn't get it and scored then two minutes later the ball bounced over me and when we're out of the cup in the semi-final um, and then at Celtic Park I, I got bullied from a corner um, they scored and we won nil down um, yeah I, like I said I felt I did okay I think my clean sheet record was, was good but I felt I let I let the team down in, in the big moments and um, I think that's something that, that I'll probably be remembered for more than more than anything else being uh, in the big games. I, 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 I wasn't good enough at, in the big games and like I say, that's what you remembered for as a goalie more than more than anything else whereas a striker you remember for the goals but that's part and parcel of the job and um, that's that's the way it is. Yeah, can I, I, I can't mean to say the call but it's... So to paraphrase it, it's, you can save 100 shots pretty much, but you'll always be remembered for the one you conceded. Um, yeah. It's very much, especially in, on the biggest stage, like it's, um, it's it's just unfortunate, really. I mean, if you make a mistake as a goalie, then it's in the back of the net. It's not like a midfielder strays a midfield, a, a straight pass, it just hits the corner flag or something. Um, <laughs> yeah. It, it really is riskless. Yeah, no, I, yeah, like I said, that's what you're remembered for as a goalie, your mistakes more than more than you save so um, but that's part and parcel of the job and that's the same at any club I've been at but more with the expectation that, that there was on the club and um, yeah the semi-final probably hurts hurts more than more than most yeah. I was think um, 10 year old goal at pro youth level and uh, conceding a shot in seven or seven games still stings so um, <laughs> dread, dread to think um, what it's like at sort of that level um, but yeah. Obviously, the season ahead, um, I know perhaps want to be in a better league position than you are, but the win under the new manager um, last night, how's sort of, sort of, after a tough spell, a more positive feeling around the club? Yeah, definitely. Like I say, we've, we've not been on a great run. Uh, the new manager's come and he's, he's tried to change a lot of things behind the scenes and, and things like that. And uh, I think over the next few weeks, we'll start uh, seeing the fruits of those. And, um, like I say, there's there's ten games left down here, so we just need to finish this, the season as strong as possible, and then um, just look forward to next season really. Because I think the first preseason game is going to be a sellout, even against one of the local teams, just because everyone's just desperate to get back to to seeing to seeing football. So I think if you're a local team and you can get some friendlies against some bigger teams, you're going to be making a lot of money this this preseason. I think so, um, especially at that level. It's not the same at Premier League level where they'll be jetting out to Australia and China <laughs> no. with, our, with our brand deals and things like that. I mean, but Port Vale's sort of near Stoke, isn't it? as bad as it yeah, is. Yeah, that's yeah, Stoke. I'm, yeah. Buying, I'm buying into the pure stereotype that English fans are usually <laughs> to be Scottish. Not a bad. And the thing I know Port Vale most for is Robbie Williams supports Port Vale. Yeah. Well, he, he designed the kit this year. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's, I think uh, with the old chairman. Um, he didn't want to get involved, but with a new chair lady and things like that, then he, she's desperate to get him involved. And um, he was due to do a concert actually at Bell Park last summer, um, but it all got cancelled because of the virus. So I'm sure he'll be back soon anyway. So, so I mean, Scott Brown and Robbie Williams turning up at, at, <laughs> I mean, That's it. That's what we. We was just all desperate for tickets. That's all we was at. No one wanted. We, it was just after we played during Man City in the cup when everyone was asking for Robert Williams tickets instead of Man City tickets. <laughs> so I, but hopefully, I mean, spoke a wee bit about it with the vaccines and things like that. But hopefully, um, I suppose this season as a whole, no matter whether you're at the top or bottom, it's pretty much just been a write off. We'll try and get through it, and then hopefully next season, even if there's fifty percent attendance, it yeah. makes so much difference. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, it's just yeah, it's just not the same. Even like when there were Premier League games and there were like three, four thousand there in the big stadiums or whatever, then it made a massive difference. And it just gives you that extra, extra percentage, that extra adrenaline rush. And um, it's almost like you have the music pumping in the dressing room. You, you're ready to go, and you go out and like, oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me entertain you. Get that one. That might work this next week. Uh, but no, it's um, it just like I say, especially night games. It's just it's just not the same. I just feel like reserve games still, and uh, you you go there with the best intentions. You're warming up, and it just doesn't feel 
it doesn't feel right. There's nobody. We've actually played um, Leighton Orient, and I don't know if you know Leighton Orient. They've got like flats in every corner of the ground. Mm. So when we played them, like they're all watching from the the, the flats, and it was nice to actually have someone abusing me for for ninety minutes from from the corner of the, the flats because you just haven't had it, um, and you just you just miss things like that, like the interaction with the home fans, and just say like giving kids gloves and things like that after games. It's just it's just not the same. I've got. A, a big bag of gloves in in my car that I've saved up for the season for the uh, for the foundation for the the half term course. You just could not be able to give any away this year. So um, now the sooner we get back, the better and better for everyone, really.